Well, I went out today put a little bit more water in her. And I did a short harvest of Swiss chart. Hello, this is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness. And today, we're going to talk about dehydrating. So it's Swiss chart. So join me. Okay, so recently did a video where I was working with basil and dehydrated basil. Well, today I went out to my wonderful garden, my fall garden, where the tomato plants are dying off, but my green type things are, are flourishing. And my peppers, even though they're smaller and smaller as the season goes by, they're still producing peppers. But I am I have Swiss chard out there that I have harvested a bunch today. It doesn't look like a lot, but I continue to harvest a little at a time. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think there's eight. Swiss chard plants, some of them in various sizes, some in pots, some in the ground. Um, some have been hit by the crickets, not crickets, grasshoppers <laughs> that have come around. But today, now some people will say, well, Beverly, why didn't you um, just blanch them, put them in the freezer? Uh, that's because my freezers are all full. The other thing people tell you is to get rid of the stems. Well, when I'm cooking, I love the stems. The stems are not super tough, and I normally chop them up really small. But I'm taking these and and take off the large part of the stem, but I'm going to keep the main part of the stem. And what I'm going to do is, no, I'm not putting them on a single layer. What I found out as I was harvesting or drying the basil, that I could put a bunch on a tray and then come every so often and toss them or stir them. Now these are the yellow Swiss chard and I've got the green Swiss chard. This is where I've got had some insects hit this one particular Swiss chard so we're gonna take care of that. So yellow and green and somewhere in here I have red. Where are you? So here's one that has a red stem, but they're all Swiss chard. Now, I had a friend of mine, I asked, did you, had you ever tried Swiss chard? And he said no. So I gave him some and gave him a little bit of, now this is one of those thick ones and now I'm not going to do that thick one. Um, I gave him some Swiss chard, good garbage, you know, shopping bag from the grocery store full, and told him how to cook it. He didn't like it. Now, for some of you that don't know about Swiss chard, Swiss chard is really like a, some people say it's like a substitute for spinach. I'm going to tell you one thing, it grows better than spinach. I've had Swiss chard plants that have lasted two years. I just didn't pull them up and they just kept producing through the winter and then this last winter when we had that huge ice storm and snow and freezing weather here in Texas uh, 
they didn't make it. So I had to, to plant all new Swiss chard this year. I also lost my five-year-old kale plant. So, but this is what I'm doing, and I'm going to, you say, okay, how are you going to dehydrate these? I'm putting them in the oven. I could very well pull out the dehydrator. However, these are fat. I'd have to really make these small. But these are fat, so therefore I can put them on the tray and I will let them dehydrate. And no, I'm not draining the water off and, and all that wonderful good stuff. We are going to put them in the oven. We're hitting the dehydrate button. And these will this will go out into the compost pile. We're going to hit the dehydrate button and put these in the oven. This is going to go on the bottom. And, and this one. Pouring off a little of the water that drained off. I know, it's like, bam, but you'll make it longer. It's a 150 degree oven. I have no intention of doing any cooking anytime soon. Oh, for those of you who haven't been with me before, so what you're seeing in the oven right there is called an oven hearth. They don't make them anymore. But what it does, and then on the bottom is a pizza stone, and on top of that is a unglazed um, patio um, stone that you could buy at a, like a Home Depot or a Lowe's if they still have them. Okay, so what's in here is a hearth kit. And what it does is it keeps the oven at an even temperature. And I can turn off my food early and it will maintain a, a, a hot oven for several hours. So I can turn off the food and I can... About two hours in, I came in and moved them around to throw them around. They were kind of sticking to the pan a little bit, but they were still damp. And then I just put them in, and then I went and ran errands. So they were in the oven for on 150 degrees for about four and a half hours. And if you hear, they're like paper. So I have one of my canning jars. So I'm going to I'm going to put I'm going to break them up because what I'll wind up doing even the stems are there. I'm going to end up using them in soups. Alright. But I've done kale before. I've done collars. And they reconstitute nicely. So you saw that when we put these on the trays, they were a whole lot of them. And there's absolutely no way I could have put all of that Swiss chard in this jar before cooking it. Yeah, this is a pan I've been using for a long time. I'll label the jar that says Swiss chard. And 
I will pull these out when I'm ready in the winter time and I am ready to make some soup, some vegetable soup, some, what is it, roast tobolia. It's, I'll try to put the link at the end of this video where you use greens. It calls for kale, but you can use any green. And you use beans and noodles. It's a wonderful soup. Okay. All right, this is Beverly Falls Jones, The Silver Fox of Consciousness. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, please. If you've tried drying greens before, you know, it'd be awesome when you go to the grocery store and they have collard greens and mustard greens, turnip greens, and they've been marked down to 98 cents. Right? They would be good. But let me know below, in the notes below, if you've got a dehydrate button on your oven or if you can get your oven down to 150 degrees so that you can take, not necessarily if you don't have a garden, but if you find things on sale. Well, this is the second time that the video just stopped on me. Anyway, what I was saying is you find something on sale, take the time and buy it and, and dehydrate it. You can also use your... Uh, um, a vacuum sealer on gentle if you have that type of vacuum sealer if you don't have a jar now these jars you know they'll sit on the counter or whatever or in my cupboard and I'll access them as necessary so thank you for watching today and again subscribe hit the button if you're a subscriber thank you for being here and as you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so, and I will see you in the next video.